That's fine, the derivative. Let's do an example with this definition. In particular, as an example, let's find the derivative of f of x equals one divided by x at a equals two. By definition, the derivative at two is the limit as h approaches zero of f of two plus h minus f of two divided by h. And we'd probably better start by replacing f of two plus h and f of two with the specific details of this function, f of two plus h is this fraction, f of two is one half, and that's all divided by h. And now we have to find a limit. We cannot use the quotient rule. Everything here is continuous, but if you plug zero in for H, you just get a division by zero error. So we have to simplify this somehow. And if you think back to when we learned how to take limits, there's no one size fits all trick for taking limits. You know, we saw problems where we had to factor and cancel. We saw problems where we had to multiply by one, but we wrote one in a kind of weird way. And neither of those tricks applies here, though. So without any real idea of what to do, let's just ask ourselves, what can we do? We have subtraction in the numerator. We could do that subtract if we wanted to. Albeit to do the subtraction, we do need a common denominator. And the common denominator of two and two plus h is the product of those two terms. So to get this two in the denominator, we multiply top and bottom by two. To get this two plus h in the denominator, we multiply top and bottom by two plus h. And when we do this subtraction, the two and the negative two, this and this, cancel.
and we are just left with negative h. Now this h and this h cancel, leaving us with only this. And this is a rational expression. Everything here is continuous. If we can that H be zero, that will give us the limit. And of course, the ultimate purpose we can see now of all this work was that we got rid of the H which was giving us a division by zero error when we plug this zero in. Now that it's gone, we find a derivative of negative one four. And that's it for this example. And as I say, there is no one size fits all trick to doing these problems. I computed this limit using a different trick than I ever used back in section 2.2. You just have to kind of take them as they come. The good news is that we're going to spend relatively little time using this definition to find derivatives. We're going to soon start learning quicker and easier to use techniques.